This is the interesting JavaScript library of the week series. I am Nitej and in this 12th episode, I will demonstrate a script which can help us in quickly generating settings panels without having to dealing with designing and creating the panel and its input controls. That library is TweakPane. Imagine you have to show a product or a service catalog of some kind on your web page and you want the user to be able to filter the catalog items based on their properties. Or you might be creating an app which deals with real-time data like a financial application or maybe a game where you want the players to be able to customize their character. TweakPane can immensely help in these kinds of scenarios by cutting down the amount of time needed to design and develop the input controls and sections for the examples which I just mentioned. So how to use TweakPane? Well first, you will have to install it. You can do that by number one, getting its reference from a CDN or number two, downloading this script and placing it in a third party folder and then referencing it using a script element or number three, downloading and installing the script using npm by using the command npm install and then tweakpane. The usage of tweakpane is also simple. There is a very good documentation provided to get you guys started. I will also show you some examples to make it even more easier for you in getting set up with TweakPane. So this is Visual Studio Code and the first thing that we need to do is to get the reference of TweakPane in this page and that can be done by simply using a script element which is pointing to the CDN URL which is this one. You can get this URL from the TweakPane documentation. After doing that, it is time to create a script element and initialize TweakPane. The first thing that we need to do is to initialize the tweakpane object by calling its constructor function and that can be done by calling new tweakpane. Now this will initialize a new tweakpane object but it will place the panel or the tweakpane inside our page. But if we want to place the tweakpane panel in a specific container then we can do that too. For that I'm just going to create a div and let's just set the id of this div as container now over here in this constructor function we need to provide an object as an argument and we need to provide the value of a property which is container the value of this container property is going to be the reference of the container so that can be done by simply calling get element by id and over here we can provide the id of the div which is container so this is how our empty pane is looking right now i'm just going to set the width of this div so that we can have a smaller pane for that, I'm just going to use the inline style and let's set the width as I think 300px is going to be enough. Now it's time to add some inputs to our tweak pane and we need to bind the inputs to some variables. So I'm just going to create an object which is going to act as a wrapper for the input variables or the variables which are going to be bound with the inputs that we are going to add to tweak pane. So let's just do that. Let's create a new object and let's call it values so the first property which i'm going to add to this values object is count and let's just set its value as one now to add this count as an input to tweak pane all we need to do is to call pane dot add input the first argument that we need to provide is the wrapping object which is values and then the second one is going to be the name of the property which is count and that should be enough to add count as an input. You can see over here that count has been added as an input and we can change its values. And that is all really we need to do to add an input to our pane. Any changes that we will make to this input value is going to be reflected back to this um, wrapping objects count property. There is another argument that we can provide to this add input function to add some more settings for the input that we are adding to our tweak pane. For example, if we want to limit the min and max values for the count property, then we can do that. For example, we can limit the minimum value as 0 and maximum value as 100. Doing that will make sure that the value of count will not go below 0 or beyond 100. We can also add a step to it so that the value of count will only be changed within these step values. So I'm going to set the step value as 1. Now we can only change the count in steps of one. You can find the reference of all of these settings within the tweakpane documentation. 
similar to a numerical input we can add a drop down list or we can add an input with string inputs it all depends on the type of value that has been set to the wrapping objects property we can also encapsulate these inputs within a folder if let's say we want to categorize the inputs within the tweak pane that we are creating to do that first we will have to create a new folder and that can be done by calling pane.add folder this is going to accept an object as an argument and we can provide the title of the folder over here so i'm just going to call it as test folder now to add the inputs to this folder all we need to do is to simply call all the functions from the folder instead of pane directly so instead of calling pane.add input we need to call folder.add input over here you can see that this count input is now inside the test folder so we can collapse or expand this folder to hide the inputs which belong to any specific folder we can also add buttons to the tweak pane and we can wire up the click event of those buttons with functions to add a button we simply have to call the function add button and we need to provide the title of the button the reference of the button will be returned from this add button function and then we can use this reference to wire up the click events to wire up the click event of this button with a function all i need to do is to simply call button.on and then provide the name of the event which is click and then we need to provide the function so this function will be called whenever the user will click on this button on the click of this button we can change the values of the properties which have been assigned as inputs to this tweak pane for instance let's say i want to change the value of this count property whenever this button will be clicked by any user what i can simply do is i can just add this statement values dot count plus equals to five now let's find out if our button is working or not so this is our button and when i'm clicking on it then the value of count is not changing over here in this pane well the value of this count property is indeed being changed in the code but it is not being reflected in the tweak pane to do that all we need to do is to call the refresh function and this will sync the tweak pane with the updated values of the properties which are bound with the inputs now let's try again this time you can see that when i am clicking on this test button then the value of count is changing there are more interesting things which we can add to this tweak pane for example we can add a graph to it which will be synchronized with the changing values we can also add an input for selecting colors some other things worth exploring are the events for the inputs or any theming which we want to apply to this tweak pane to do that we just need to change the base colors which have been applied to the individual elements i have not yet explored them so you can do that if you want to and that was everything this video has to offer about tweak pane if you want to learn more then you can go to its github page which has the source code and many other helpful stuff like any issues which other people have encountered like this video and subscribe to this channel to stay updated with more such videos use the comments area or join our discord server for any questions its link is given in the video description i am nitej and i will see you next time Till then, stay safe and have fun.